Hi, and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. In this video, we're going to look at some common financial calculator errors. I find uh, as we close in on exam day, it's uh, currently right around the middle of October, and I find as we close in on exam day, I get a lot of questions from students about why they can't solve a particular problem on the calculator. And that's exactly what this is. I had a student email me with this particular question, said, I don't know why I can't get the right answer. Uh, it's frustrating. And I'm gonna show the typical errors that happen here. Now, this is everything the student emailed me. I don't know where this question came from. I hope that I haven't uh, inadvertently violated somebody's copyright here. Uh, anyways, the student has done well here. They've laid out all the information. Um, I think that they probably drew the line that I always recommend people draw. Oh yeah, drew the line, there it is right there. This is exactly from the student's email, perfect. And we would then uh, just duplicate the drawing of the line just so we can see it all. We know we're trying to compute that uh, present value. We know that our uh, rate here, is 12%. We know that's compounding every six months. I know you're not getting 12% every six months, but it's compounding every six months. Uh, we know that the payment is uh, 1400 and that's money that's coming to the student is correctly identified. This would be a positive. And we know this is all happening over a period of six years and that we're gonna be left with nothing at the end. Okay, so the calculator, it's all set up for us. I'm actually gonna switch the calculator to begin mode just so that we can see how this would all work. Okay, I've got the calculator all ready to go. I'm gonna clear my calculator memory. We're all good. And first thing we're gonna do is bring up the PY menu. And we're already set to two, but I'm just gonna do it again here. So we do two, enter, and that automatically defaults then the uh, CY to two as well. So we have PY and CY both to two exactly what the student told us they wanted and exactly correct. And now we're gonna do six second function times PY. And with this calculator, very common error here is not to hit the N at this point. If I don't hit N, I will not get the right answer. I have to do N equals 12, and that's going to give me my proper calculation. Then I have N equals 12. Now the calculator has literally just done six, which is my number of years, times two, which is the periods per year, six times 12, or sorry, six times two is 12. And we see that right here, times PY, the times PY button does what it's supposed to do. It takes six times PY, six times two is 12. And then we're going to plug in our rate. Our rate we said is 12. I, well, I don't have to do any messing with the rate. With this calculator, with the Sharp calculator, it's gonna work very well. Uh, if you're using the HP, you're probably already lost because the HP, of course, has no PY uh, function the same way that this calculator or the newer versions, the Sharp, do. And I'm really not a fan of the HP calculator for that reason. Uh, then we look at the present value. Uh, present value we're gonna solve for. We'll leave that for now. Payment at 1400, as the student rightly indicated, that money is coming to Renee in this scenario. We're gonna leave that as a positive and no money left at the end. We can then flip over. We're gonna do this right. And we're gonna bring up the begin submenu. So second function, begin. And I can see the little set up here that tells me that I can use the set button to change that over to begin. I now see begin on my screen and I can quit out of here. And this is exactly what I need to have. I need to see that little begin on my display that matches up to what the student rightly identified that we're trying to solve this thing on begin. And now I can do my solve. I can compute my present value. I get $12,441.62. That is, uh, the correct answer. That's the answer that we're supposed to get.
the second thing that happens with an email like this, the student says, why can't I figure this out? What am I doing wrong? And when I see an answer like this where it's relatively close, I should be able to figure out right away. Although honestly, in this situation, I didn't. I, I didn't uh, clue in right away what happened with this, but I should be able to see that these are pretty close to one another. And that's normally just to begin and end confusion. And it's pretty easy to see this. I can do compute, or sorry, I can do, I'll do a second function, begin, and I'm gonna flip this over to end mode. We're gonna go back to the default mode, the end mode for the calculator, and we're going to resolve this question. We're gonna do second function. So we're gonna do a compute, I apologize, compute uh, present value. And now we get the 11737 that the student identified as being incorrect. And it's difficult when you can't see what you've done wrong. There's just not an easy way to make that adjustment. You often need somebody else to point it out for you. I'm no different than that. It's quite common that you just can't see your own mistake. That's where I'm trying to show these mistakes so that you can maybe put them on a checklist and think about whether or not you properly identified them. I've already shown two of the common errors. If we're thinking about this in a checklist, my typical checklist would include, uh, did I hit N after I hit the times PY? Now we did it in this case. If you don't, you're going to get a wacky answer based on the last information you plugged in to the calculator. And the next then is, am I properly on beginner end mode? Whichever I need to be on. I'll add a third item to this checklist uh, momentarily. We need a slightly different scenario for this one. Uh, let's say that in my third scenario, my new scenario, or my second scenario, I guess, we have Renee wants to invest, let's say $20,000, and then wants to draw uh, $1,400 every six months. And wants to have, uh, let's say, $5,000 left at the end. And wants to know. Uh, what rate, in fact, we'll do nothing left at the end. That's a little bit of an easier question. And wants to know uh, what rate to use. Okay, now we'll do the question properly the first time out the gate. And what I can see here is that my uh, present value, that should be a negative. That should be negative 20,000. That's money that would go out of Renee's pocket. The uh, payment then should be 1400 positive, exactly like we did here, and the future value should be zero. We'll do that all that way, and or what rate does she need to get to do this? This is really what we're trying to solve for here. Let's pop over to the calculator again. We'll clear everything just so we have a clean start. We're gonna go second function, PY2. Enter into our PY spot. We're still compounding semi-annually. That's all good. We're gonna quit out of that menu and then do six second function times PY. I don't forget to hit N. And then I'm going to do 20,000 into the uh, present value spot. I'm gonna make it a negative. It's going out of pocket and then 1,400. And that's coming into Renee's hands. I'll keep it as a positive, zero future value. And we'll compute our rate. And we see that, in fact, she doesn't need much rate at all. She needs a negative 5% rate in order to have her be able to accomplish that. Perfect. So we would we know she doesn't need to take much risk. That is negative 5%. That's what the rate she would need to obtain that outcome. We could go back and play around with that and figure out then what... Uh, uh, what amount she could go down to or what amount she could withdraw or whatever. And that's all secondary. It's not relevant here. I want to show the common mistake. And the mistake would look like this. We'll do the same set of calculations here, the same inputs. We'll do 
PY at two, we'll quit out of here. We'll do six second function times PY. And then we'll do 20,000. This time I am deliberately going to leave the 20,000 as a positive, which really means that's money coming to Renee. And then we're gonna do the 1400 also as a positive, and then finally zero as future value. And now I'm going to compute my interest rate. This is exactly what I see all the time. I probably get, I don't know, an email about once a month that says, what does error five mean in my calculator? Uh, with this calculator, it's error five. With sharp calculators, it's error two. Doesn't really matter. If you see an error like this, it almost certainly means, and error five exactly means this, that I did my positive and negative backwards or that I messed up my positive and negative. And when I get that error, that's what that means. Now, the other thing I would point to here is what does my mental math show? I do think this is worth looking at. The mental math or the kind of quick non-time value of money math, if you want to look at it that way. Well, what I say here, is real quickly, I know that she's looking at $1,400. Going back to the original question, she's looking at $1,400 times six times two. That's the amount of money I know she's taking out in total. If I'm just kind of roughly eyeballing it, I can see that that gives me $16,800. And I know she's earning 12% interest. So it should be something less than that that if I get an answer more than $16,800, that probably doesn't make sense. Those would be the items that I would have on that checklist. And I think this is something useful. If you find the financial calculator maybe still a little bit frustrating, or you find yourself uh, occasionally making these errors, and this definitely happens to students operating under stress on the exam, maybe what you do is when you sit down to write your exam, take your scrap paper, and take 30 or 45 seconds to write out these four checklist items. And then when you're working through a financial calculator question on the exam, refer back to the checklist, make sure that you did those four steps. Okay, good luck with your studying and good luck on the exam. I hope that this is a useful video. I hope it's not uh, confusing or stressful. I just want to make your life a little bit easier with respect to exam questions. Perfect. Everybody enjoy your ongoing studies. Thank you.